Hello and welcome, I'm John Garlick and I'm here with Sheriff Matthew Wade and this is Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Welcome, Sheriff. Oh, it's always good to be on the show, John. How about you? It's always good to be here, too. We've got a really cool guest today, and you're going to like that. But before we do that, let's look at our count and see how busy you guys were. Never let us down. Counts up to 4,811 people put in jail, all because somebody was willing to speak up and help us find them. And uh, we're thankful for the relationship we have with the community. I say that every week, but I truly mean it. The relationship with the community is, is our strongest point, and uh, we want to protect that. So thank you. And we've got uh, lineups coming on later in the show. You can look at those folks and see if you know anybody or their, their whereabouts. And if you do, give the sheriff a call. He'll pick them up. Now, Sheriff, we've had a, uh, had a busy weekend, kind of in a weird, not-so-happy way. Yeah, you know, um, it's been insanely hot. And uh, I think it, uh, I'd say oppressive heat. Mm -hmm. You know, I think it's what the term that uh, James Fan used the other day. So with that being said, you know, people are in their cars, they're driving, got the air conditioning on, they can't hear as much. But uh, yesterday, two different state troopers were hit by motorists traveling in the road. The state troopers had pulled somebody over, they had their lights and sirens activated. On the side of the road, somebody just didn't see them, plowed right into them. Thankfully, both troopers are okay, but uh, I bring that up because um, not only law enforcement, but record drivers, or if you see anybody broke down on the side of the road, there's a move over law. And the move over law, if you're on, a, on the interstate or a divided highway where there's two lanes of traffic on each side or more, if you see somebody with the lights on, you need to change lanes and get out of that, that uh, right-hand lane and give that person on the side of the road, that law enforcement officer, that lane. If you can't move over, if it's a road where you can't get over, you're supposed to slow down to at least 15 miles less than the posted speed limit. And I would do even less than that if it's a fast moving place um, you know, it's very dangerous. You know, we talk about law enforcement officers getting shot at and killed, but one of the main ways they get killed is in traffic accidents. Wow. So move over, slow down. It's a law. You can get a ticket for it, but the, it's not about making money. It's not about writing a ticket. It's about people not getting hurt. And um, so we want people to move over, slow down. If you can't move over, just go real slow. Make every effort you can to uh, watch out for those people on the side of the road. And once again, yesterday, if you get on social media, you can find those trooper cars, and that trooper car was uh, is about half the length that it was originally after it got hit by an 18-wheeler. So uh, the move over law is important to us. It's important to our families, and uh, we just ask that you slow down and move over when you see uh, law enforcement lights. There you go. Move over and keep everybody safe on the highway or on the back roads. It's vital for Alabama, so Alabama's move over law. Well, we'll be back with a really interesting guest and the first half of our lineup here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Scammers are now taking advantage of people's increased economic anxiety. One of the latest ploys is to phone unsuspecting victims and pose as representatives of utility companies. A scammer may identify themselves as your local power company, they may be able to identify your account number and even your name and address, but that does not mean they are legitimate. They may claim you are past due and your services are about to be shut off. Do not let the implied seriousness of this call frighten you into making a quick decision to pay. Instead, hang up the phone, then contact your local utility company directly using the phone number listed on your bill or on their website. Speak with a representative to check on your account. Never give your banking information over the phone unless you have placed the call yourself to a phone number that you know is correct. Utility companies do not demand your banking information by email or phone. They will not force you to pay over the phone as your only option. Any reputable company will never request payment by gift card, reloadable cash card, wiring money, or cryptocurrency. Some of the requested cards could be Moneypack, Vanilla, Google, eBay, Amazon, or even an iTunes card. But you should know that there are still many more variety of cards the scammer could suggest that you use. If they ask for payment in any form of these cards, it is a scam. For more information, you can go to ftc.gov or call me, Nancy Hilton, at the Calhoun County Sheriff's Office at 256-236-6600.
Welcome back to this week's lineup. First up, we have Michael Reynolds of Wellington, Alabama. Failure to appear, possession of controlled substance. Al Reynolds of Anderson, Alabama. Bond revocations, possession of marijuana in the first. Bribing a public servant, paraphernalia, sale and delivery. Michael Bush of Anderson, Alabama. Probation violation, possession of controlled substance. Rid of arrest, burglary in the second. Ashley Nicole of Anniston, Alabama, failed to appear. Human trafficking in the second. Possession of controlled substance. Possession of marijuana in the second. Use and possession of drug paraphernalia. Soliciting and prostitution. Larry Ashford Jr. of Anniston, Alabama, failed to appear. Robbery in the third. Justin Bagley of Anniston, Alabama. Probation violation. Possession of controlled substance. John Matcham of Anniston, Alabama. Probation violation. Escape in the first. If you have any information about these cases, please call the Sheriff's Office at 256-236-6600. Welcome back. We hope you saw somebody in the lineup that you know or know where they are. And if you do, call Sheriff Wade. You call, he hauls. Sheriff, we have a really cool guest today. We do. Good friend of mine. Well, anybody can tell by looking at me that the way to my heart is through uh, food. Yes. So, you know. So Elizabeth I'm, Havlicek is here. Elizabeth, and she's done got on to me <laughs> about eating, <laughs> eating the product before y'all saw it. So. Yes. Well, we did. Put it in a basket just for you. Right in front of my, you know, it's within arm's reach. I, I figured it was fair game. <laughs> so we have Elizabeth Havlicek, chief cravings creator of Oh So Good Popcorn and Peanut Brittle. Mm -hmm. yeah. no. Not your first company. No. And Elizabeth, uh, this is like a first for us on this show. So we've got a product that's not even in the, in the market yet. She doesn't go live for another week or so. And Elizabeth is a TED Talk celebrity. Ah, I love TED Talks. TEDx. 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 And a major player in the <laughs> turnaround business for corporations. So large corporations have hired her to turn them profitable. So she knows how to make a buck. Uh, this is her the second business I know of that involved cooking. So Elizabeth, welcome. And welcome to Oh So Good Popcorn. Thank you for having me, guys. So it's nice tell to us, be here. Well, tell us, tell us why. Why you're in... Well, um, with uh, everything we've gone through over the last year and a half with the pandemic, um, I just felt like it was a good time to bring something fun into the marketplace. And sweets tend to be fun food. And what could be more fun than popcorn? And so you, you go live with this product when? Uh, next week, early next week. We'll go live on the website. And then we will be... Um, uh, focusing on getting into some specialty retailers and then um, investing in kiosks uh, in malls is the long-term plan. So this is a, this is a major endeavor. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> it's all so good. Yeah, yeah. So this is a major endeavor, not your first. So your first, and I don't know if it was your first, Elizabeth's Moments of Joy, mm -hmm. was that your first? It was my first solo. Um, and uh, it was a baking company in the Phoenix area. Uh, within a few months of our launch, we were named Best of the Valley by Phoenix Magazine. And uh, there were just uh, um, circumstances that uh, led me to get an offer back in the corporate world. And I said, you know what, I want to make that move back into the corporate world. So I, I jumped back into the corporate world and did a turnaround of a company on Long Island, and then food kept calling me. So I answered the call. <laughs> food calls me every day, <laughs> especially yeah. sweets. Yeah. So Elizabeth's been all over the world in, in the corporate, corporate environment. And so corporate executive, corporate executive, Elizabeth's moment of joy, and then back to Long Island as corporate executive, and now, and then into Virginia doing something, and, yeah. and now popcorn. Yes. So major entrepreneurial player. I know we have some people in our listening audience that uh, 
that probably want to get into the into the business for themselves. Mm -hmm. So, how do you how do you just do that? How do you decide to do that? Well, um, there's some people who might say it's kind of a sickness um, <laughs> 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 because you have to be willing to you know take a lot of risks to do it. But I think that if you um, take advantage of resources that are available to you, um, you know, the small business, uh, SBA, has a lot of free resources that are available. Um, there's also um, something called the Senior Corps of Retired Executives that can help people get mentoring um, by people who have done it before. And so I think anything that you can do to uh, educate yourself and find ways to minimize the risks is the smart way to approach it. Excellent. So we're going to take a break, and when we get back, you can, you can talk more about getting into business Kay. for yourself, Kay. and we'll let the sheriff eat some more popcorn. So okay, stay great. with us here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Welcome back to the second half of the lineup. We have Terry Cruz of Huntsville, Alabama. Probation violation, manufacturing controlled substance. Marion Daniel of Ohatchee, Alabama, writ of arrest, distribution controlled substance. Marcus Gamble of Anniston, Alabama, probation violation, burglary in the third. Kayla Meyer of Huntsville, Alabama, probation violation, possession of controlled substance. Zachary Hudgens of Ohatchee, Alabama, failure to appear, possession of controlled substance, use and possession of drug paraphernalia, carrying a pistol without a license. Kyle Sharpton of Montford, Alabama, probation violation, possession of controlled substance. If you have any information about these cases, please call the Sheriff's Office at 256-236-6600. Heck, uh, that was the second half of our lineup. Again, if you saw somebody in there and you know where they are, call the Sheriff. He'll come get them. They he might want a room. As hot as it is, they might want some air conditioning. I don't know. They might, but they might they're, not they're not going to get popcorn. They're not going to get popcorn. Well, they, they could might order some, but we're not going to get them <laughs> So we're here with Elizabeth Havlicek, creative, what, what's your title? Chief Cravings Creator. Chief Cravings Creator of Oh So Good Popcorn. Cravings Creator. I like that. You feeling some cravings? I do. <laughs> Have some popcorn. <laughs> uh, I'll, I'll wait. I got in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> so we were, before the break, we were talking about how people get into the business and, and all that. And so you, you use the internet to generate some investors, right? That was, uh, yes. tell us a little bit about that. So um, one of the options that's available for people who want to start a business who feel like they don't have the funding is to use what's called crowdsourcing. Um, and utilizing crowdsourcing can actually be an excellent tool as part of your advanced marketing to generate a market for the product you're trying to bring to market. So in my case, I actually used um, a program called Kickstarter, just kickstarter.com. And you can use it to um, you know, build your mailing list in advance. Um, it's a great tool because people can uh, contribute as little as $5 to your Kickstarter, um, but you're getting people to buy in and invest in you and in your product prior to even launching. So uh, we successfully funded a uh, little over $12,000 um, in 28 days uh, to purchase the production equipment for the, for the popcorn, actually the manufacturer of the popcorn. So your, your cooking life started when you were just a little girl, right? Very small, Very yes. Small. In, in the kitchen with mama. Yep, absolutely. I'm going to get in trouble here. That's kind of a dying art. Yeah. You know, uh, my grandmother and mother, I can remember, you know, there, nothing like your mother's cooking. Yeah. You know, so I, I think, I don't think with two families working and, and the ease of going through the drive through some of that's getting lost and those recipes uh, need to be passed down because they're, a lot, most of the time it's not uh, written. Yeah, I have a lot of those. Uh, Elizabeth is, is a genius in corporate leadership skills for the very dying art you talked about. She is able to turn companies around and walk into what traditionally is a man's executive world 
and just absolutely turn the tide in her favor. And you know how she does it? How she do it? Milk and cookies. I understand. Milk and cookies <laughs> in the boardroom. Milk and cookies in the boardroom will turn your company around. <laughs> Outstanding. So, okay, what, well, you've got popcorn, you've got peanut brittle. Elizabeth's Moments of Joy was all baking stuff, wasn't it? Wasn't well, it? actually, the, the uh, nut brittle st actually started life at Elizabeth's Moments of Joy. And uh, it wasn't one of my original products because everything else was baked. And I used to just make the nut brittle, which is actually with all premium nuts. It has macadamias, cashews, pecans, almonds. Um, uh, I used to make it just for friends, uh, for kind of party favors for people to take home. And one day, a girlfriend of mine brought some home to her father. And instead of eating it herself, and she came back to my house the next day, with a fistful of money saying, Daddy wants you to make him some nut brittle. <laughs> and, uh, and so many people started requesting it that we added it to the line. And it was sold in four retail stores in the Phoenix area. And, uh, and one day I just was thinking to myself, because I, after I closed Elizabeth's Moments of Joy, I continued you know, to cook for people. And uh, I thought, God, I think this might taste good on popcorn. And that's how it was born. So you spilled it all over some popcorn. I did. So why popcorn? Not just beside the fun facts of popcorn. But when you were sitting there, okay, I want to go back into business for myself. Yeah. What caused popcorn to pop into your head? <laughs> um, <laughs> so, you know, I think part of it was just the appeal and how people reacted to it. But it's, um, you know, it's an easy go-to snack for people versus... Um, baked products where I think people, there's a lot more advanced thought, you know, you're usually buying it for a particular occasion, those type of things. And, um, and I, I also learned a valuable lesson when I had launched Elizabeth's Moments of Joy in that I think the product lines that I was offering was way too wide. And so I started off with a very complicated model that was difficult to manage. And so I wanted to focus on just one or two single core f items and then build out from there once we good achieve advice. success at Good this. advice for the entrepreneur. Pick something you're really yeah. good at. Don't get too excited and just keep it simple. Give yeah. a shout out to uh, Miss Ray that does the apples at our yeah. local train station. You know, she does apples and she makes them very exquisitely and pe she runs out every day if she does one thing and she does it well yeah. and she comes to mind when, about being a, a good entrepreneur and having a good idea so just want to give a shout out to her. Yeah, shout yeah, out to her. Great. So before we break, uh, Oh So Good Popcorn available online right now. Next week. Next week, ohsogood.com and then maybe at a local uh, golf club or major event coming to your area. Elizabeth, thank you for being on our show. Thank, thank you, you for bringing the sheriff some popcorn. Me. Thanks. <laughs> we'll be right back uh, after our uh, of our crazy criminal and uh, we'll be right back after Crime Stoppers here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted. Welcome back to another week of our Crime Stoppers segment. Between July 19th and July 21st, an unknown person stole two metal lawn chairs and an outdoor swing from a resident in Diarmaville Road, Alabama. Between July 21st and July 22nd, a residence located at McLean Drive in Oxford was burglarized, and television and cash were stolen. If you have any information about these cases, please call the Sheriff's Office at 256-236-6600. Stupid! You're so stupid! What's a popcorn chair? I'm good. You I'm, sure? I, I've had, I've gotten in trouble because I was eating it, and she said we had to leave it for everybody. Oh, so, well, but you go ahead. I will. So you know what goes good with popcorn? What's that? It's just about anything you would you would drink that might get you in trouble. You're right. This week's crazy criminal, Michael DeSlot, was uh, drinking and partaking in Louisiana. You know that's a big party state. Well, af after a night of uh, drinking, he gets in his car and drives to what he thinks is a hotel. Ah. All right, so he goes to the door and the door won't open, so he knocks on the door and they let him in and he goes to the counter and um, asks if it's a hotel and um, 
it actually was a Louisiana State Trooper post. And so they accommodated him with a room that night. I'm sure they did. Yeah, I, I, you know, they didn't charge him right then, but it, I think it was an expensive stay <laughs> in the end. But if you get so drunk that you drive yourself to the police department, which happens, we've actually had that happen here locally. Yeah. So uh, you might deserve it if you're that drunk. So, Oh, Mitchell, Mitchell, go to a hotel and get some popcorn. So, yeah, don't be like Mitchell. Be responsible and find a real hotel. We've got several of them around, and pretty soon a hotel near you might have oh-so-good popcorn. We appreciate you being with us this week on Calhoun County's Most Wanted, and uh, enjoy the popcorn, and we hope to see you again next week, but not in the lineup here on Calhoun County's Most Wanted.